building was once used as the steam locomotive shop and it currently houses Crossroads Rail Car Services Incorporated.
and Cleary County is served by the Sturge Ranger District Office. The Sturge District is comprised of 117,000 acres in Cleary, Pulaski, Wayne, and Whitley Counties, and has two state wild rivers, Rock Creek and the Big South Fork of the Company, and two candidates for National Scenic and Wild Rivers, Rock Creek and Marsh Creek. 54 miles of the Sheltawi Trace National Trail are also located within the Sturge Ranger District. Coming up on your right is a small waterfall we call Dripping Springs. Kentucky has the second largest amount of running water per state, the first being Alaska.
out on the railway in June 1903. Barthel was home to 300 people, living in more than 50 houses during 1905, and was eventually abandoned and torn down about 1950. However, the Coger family has reconstructed the town to its 1915 appearance, and overnight accommodations are offered in reconstructed miners' cabins. The bathhouse, doctor's office, and barber shop are located in the building next to the railway. The company store number two will be ahead on your left. The company store also served as the post office for the Barfell community. Just ahead on your right is the school and church. The school and church were the place of many social events and activities in each of the mining camps along the rail.
will be the south fork of the Cumberland River. not only used the K&T Railway as a means of getting their product to market, but benefited from passenger service as well. In 1928 and 1929, the K&T's passenger service timetable reveals round-trip fares from Stearns to Camargo at 35 cents. Camargo was washed away in a disastrous flood in the March of 1929. The floodwaters rose so quickly that families had no time to move furniture or supplies. Fortunately, there were cliffs that the families in Camargo, Worley, and Yamacraw could seek shelter until the water receded. Camargo reported a loss of 14 structures, which included the company's store and the overhead conveyor system that carried the coal across the river. The town was never rebuilt. In 1982, the Big South Fork Scenic Railway began running passenger trains to the Camargo area. Simple boarding platforms were used to unload passengers so that they could enjoy a closer view of the river. Today, a few remaining foundations and rock walls are left as a reminder of this community.
slow to a stop, the conductor will exit the train briefly to throw the switch that will take us to Blue Heron. In a moment, we will begin to reverse for roughly a mile, first crossing the Roaring Paunch Creek, and then Kentucky State Route 742. The bridge we're about to cross was originally owned by the New York Central Railroad and bought secondhand by the K&T. When it arrived on site, it was discovered that the bridge wouldn't fit its abutments. Instead of rebuilding either end of the bridge, engineers tried a simple trick. They flipped it over, and that bridge fit perfectly into place to this day.
Wait, wait, one piece.
for riding with us today on the Big South Fork Scenic Railroad. As we arrive back at the depot, please remain seated until the train has come to a complete stop. Once the conductor opens the gate on your car, you may exit the train at your leisure. Remember, your ticket today also serves as admission to the McCreary County Museum, located conveniently across from the depot. For more information on special events at the railroad, including the Polar Express, please see a member of our ticket office. Again, we thank you for riding the Big South Fork Scenic Railway and wish you safe travels wherever your final destination may be. Have a great day.
And then I'll uh, 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 You want to put, uh, put your stuff in the car before we go to the museum? Oh, uh, yeah, but, um, oh, but uh, first I think we're getting uh, me, and, me and him are going to come up the capital. Yeah, we're going to go to the capital. Yeah,